Hey, this is Sam from MParticle, and today I'm going to take just a few minutes to walk you through how to get started with the MParticle SDK to capture all of your mobile app data. So to get started, I'm going to start here on MParticle.com and click Sign Up and create a new account. Okay, now that I have an account, I need to create an app. Oh, I'll just call it Demo App. Now while my app is being created, I'm actually going to switch over to Android Studio and create a brand new application. The steps are actually pretty similar if you already have an application, but for this, just to show you how easy it is, I'm going to start with nothing. And I'll just select all the defaults. So now Android Studio will begin to build my application. I'll switch back to MParticle. This is the MParticle Quick Start. The steps are pretty similar for iOS or Android or Unity or an HTML5 hybrid app, but today I'm going to show you Android. I'm going to select Android Studio and let's go with Gradle. At this point, Android Studio should have finished building my app. I'm just going to Go to the quick start here and copy and paste our repository URL. Paste that right in there. So at this point, the Gradle build tool will be able to look at the mparticle maven repo to figure out where to look for our SDK. And the second step is actually adding our SDK specifically as a dependency. So at this point, Android Studio will contact MParticle and will automatically download the latest version of our SDK. And at that point, you can start referencing MParticle classes. Now, before we actually stick any MParticle code into our app, we need to add our MParticle key and secret. So I'll copy and paste this code. And what I'm going to do is create a new resource XML file. And I can really call this anything, but I'll call it mparticle.xml. All we now need to do is copy the code to initiate the SDK whenever the app launches. So in the onCreate method of this activity, I'll copy and paste the code. While that builds, I will go back to the quick start and I'll hit test. Once our app is built, we'll be able to test whether or not we did everything correctly. The screen will light up green if you have indeed followed the steps. Okay, now let's see if Android Studio has finished building our app. Indeed it has. I'm going to launch it in an emulator. Okay, it worked. So that's it for the quick start. So the next step that I would recommend you do is connect your app to a third party service. I've actually already created a Google Analytics property. So here it is, and I'm just going to copy and paste the tracking ID. I will go to the MParticle services pane. Here's where you can customize all, all sorts of services and determine where your data flows to. So I'm going to select Google Analytics. And I see here that I have an Android app on my app family. If you had other apps that would show up here too, such as iOS or Unity, and I will enable it and I will click Save. Now I'm going to go to the emulator and fire the app back up. As I open it, the SDK will contact MParticle and we should see events come into the event stream. And there it is. So we have an app open in the event stream and we actually see we're sending outbound data to Google Analytics now. If I switch over to Google Analytics, I see that I now have one user 
in New York, which is where the MParticle is located. What we've done is instrumented the basic quick start, allowing you to manage user sessions and basic ang analytics. We've also now set up MParticle so that your data is forwarded to Google Analytics. You can copy similar steps for all the other service providers that we support just by using our web app without having to write any new code. Thanks for listening and check us out at www.mparticle.com.